Pewter is a map I have never played before and I wanted to see if I could beat it in 100 days. To do this, I'll have to beat all the bosses on this map, which include the three Fjordor exclusive mini bosses, as well as beating the three island bosses on Alpha, the highest difficulty setting. I also must face the mega crazy insane endgame boss, Fenrir Circle. Along with this 100 days, I'll be including some tips and tricks I found along the way as well. I'm Phoenix Mech, and to keep it simple, this is my 100 days of playthrough of Fjordor. Day 1. I started off spawning in Vardaland North, since it said easy and I have no idea where I'm going. It was a bit cold, so I started with the Arc Basics, I gathered what I could, made some tools, and made myself a torch just in case just to help with the cold a little bit. It's not the best thing, but it can buy a little extra time when it's cold. After a little searching, I found a few dinos. I crafted some spears, and I jumped right in. Then they broke. And I had only my torch to fight them with. See, it can buy time with fighting too. Mm -hmm. Come on! <laughs> First dinos I encounter and I almost die. <laughs> I managed to get away to craft some more spears and get back to fighting. Right, what's up, buddy? Now I got this. Oh, I'm hungry now? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is it. This is it. I swear, I always die, die to dilos <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> All right. I ended up getting my revenge, though, and I made myself a full set of cloth armor. I searched around a bit for smaller things to kill and harvest. I didn't like it. Oh, get out of here! Of course, I'm only here for five minutes, and I already find a pego trying to steal what little things I have. I kept making my way down to the beach, where a bunch of compies attacked me, and a trait got in the mix. Oh no! No! no. Okay. No, I didn't mean to hit you! No! I was able to find safety on a rock, though, until they lost aggro. And then I made myself a campfire just to get some meat. If I'm going to keep taking damage, I'm going to need something better than berries to heal with. Also, Fjordor is cold. I couldn't step more than a few feet away from the fire without taking damage, and it wasn't even night yet. I attempted to knock out a parasaur that was roaming around just so I could have some help with holding stuff, but it took one too many rocks to the face and it was done. I killed it! No! <laughs> Oh no! To try and escape the cold a little bit, I built myself a little thatch hut with a campfire inside. Fire. All this fire in a thatch house must be safe, right? Well, it's gonna have to be. It's the only way I'd survive the night. Day 2. After making it through the night, I spent some time crafting a bow and some arrows. I'm debating whether or not I should build a raft since a huge bit of water seemed to run through the middle of the map. Instead, I decided to knock out a low-level parasaur with my fist. Yeah! Oh, I almost killed it! I almost killed it. But I fed it some berries to tame it up. This would definitely help in getting around a little bit faster and carrying more items. This thing's probably gonna die in like two seconds. I had noticed there was something new on this map, and there was different question mark locations on the map, so I figured I would explore the one closest to me. On the way, I found a rune, which on this map, it's like an explorer's note. After getting to the question mark, it just seemed like it was a point of interest and nothing I needed was actually there. I wonder if the question marks are for metal. I kept following the coast, trying to avoid any big dangers I could until I stumbled upon honey. And it was on the floor. Yeah, look at that. Which is a very welcome addition. Normally you have to get them from beehives, which could be very bad sometimes. These you can just harvest with your tools. Honey is also used to tame one of the map's newer creatures, the Andrew Sarkis. Without a spyglass, I couldn't tell the levels, but I just went up to the first one I saw. Let's see here. I threw out the honey and I jumped on its back and hung on for dear life. They have a little mini game where you have to press the arrows as they come up on the screen. I don't even know what level it is. Well, it decided to launch me off a cliff. Off road. And get stuck. Which causes them to throw you off. Oh. I tried to eat my butt along with some aloes chasing behind. Oh, it's coming after me now. Oh no. Oh no! <laughs> oh! Oh! There's Allosaurus now! No. <laughs> that went bad! <laughs> that went very bad! I managed to escape and I watched the owls eat to what up. was supposed to oh. be a potentially new friend. Messing up my thing. Ah. Yeah, he's gonna die probably. Yep, there he goes. I surveyed the area to see if there was anything else I could tame. I saw a few more Andrew Sarkis along with some metal and decided that this would be a good place to have a little base. So I made myself a little 2x2 two two with a campfire since I couldn't survive the cold again at night and I waited till morning. Day 3. I was going to have another go at Andrew Sarkis taming and I found a pretty low level since it didn't take much to tame at all. Something's upset over there. Alright. Yes, we did it! It tamed out at a level right. 22. What, what level Whoa. are you? Oh, you're, 
probably super low. <laughs> Managed to find Please. another one yes. that tamed out at a level 127 and another okay, at 89. Yes. No clue what the levels were before since you can't get close to them without them aggroing. I didn't have a spyglass. Lower level or not, it was definitely helpful to have a faster, stronger mount able to carry some weight if I needed it as well. With the little Andrew pack, I was able to explore a little bit more freely, but decided to load them up with some much needed metal. Once back to base, I decided to breed the Andrews mostly out of curiosity to see what a baby one looks like. All right, here it comes. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, it's so stupid looking. Oh my goodness. That's so cute. Shortly after, I found a new spot to build my base. We got three of these puppy pig dog things. Day four. I wanted to explore the modded items I had since there were a bunch of cool skins for your armor and tools along with the nice building items. I suited up in my new armor and now I look like a real viking. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Day 5. While trying to place my whole house there, a fairy decided he didn't like it there and tried to run me down. Fuzzy Raptor, get away from me! Yo. Yo. <laughs> no. 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 Oh god. <laughs> oh no. I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> that was so stupid. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ooh, Luckily, nice. the squad backed me up. That was so dumb. <laughs> right, I put the house down and filled it with all the things I needed. Wow, that thing looks cool. Shit's out of my head. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, that scared me so bad. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Get him! <laughs> Wait, do I have anything? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I can't. Oh gosh. Oh, why? I should have cleared out the area more, but oh my goodness, it scared me so bad. Oh, is that another one? Oh no, that's mine. <laughs> I also put myself a little fence up, so hopefully I wouldn't get attacked anymore. Day six. I needed a berry gatherer, and it was fortunate enough to have a 150 perfect tame trike that happened to get trapped inside the fence when I was building. Oh. You're stuck in the house? I thought I could keep it running, but it was better you to trank it from the inside of my house. No! <laughs> Didn't take long for it to start running and pass out. Yes! Alright, we did it! Tamed it up with berries and used it to clean up the rest of the area around my base. Day 7. I needed an easier water source to get to, so I laid down some pipes. Now I didn't have to jump off my little cliff every time I wanted some water. Next thing on the list was to find some crystal. The map was still very new to me, but the mountains are usually a pretty good spot to look. I took out two Andrews, which at the time seemed like a good idea, but it was a little clunky. Get out of here. I did find some crystal, which was actually purple on this map. It was not too far from my base, so when I got a flyer, this would be a good spot to gather crystal as well as obsidian. I was still a little nervous with the Andrews since I wasn't sure of their capabilities, but I decided to test them with the Spino. Here we go. Seemed a little OP get it, get it, to have them mount this early on since they didn't need a saddle to ride, but it's working in my favor. Get out. Okay, I gotta change that follow distance. Day 8. Look how pretty this looks. Wow. Oh, it's really pretty over there. I'm probably gonna freeze my butt off. I took this day to explore more. I was hoping to run into the map's new creatures, the Fjordhawk. I wanted to stay and take my time, but I had to keep moving since the nights on this map were awfully cold. Alright, let me zoom through here. Play that guy. Ooh, it's a mega raptor. Nope, 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 nope. Keep going, piggy. Mm. They still chasing me? Okay. I think I think we're okay. I think we're okay. No! Oh, screw you! Dude, ah, uh. stupid, stupid. Oh, come on. Ugly. Get out of here, dork. Now I had to figure out a way to get down safely back to my Andrew. This is stupid. This is stupid. Where's my guy even at? I don't even know. Oh, dumb, dumb, dumb. Okay, where's my guy at? My guy down there? I don't... <laughs> I don't know where my guy went. Oh, no. I, like, I knew that, too. I knew that my, Microraptors are, like, the fastest creatures in art. So, 
was like, oh no, he's not going to get me. And he did. And <laughs> he did. When I had finally gotten across, I had some Fjord Hawks following me. There's nothing you have to do to get them to do this. They will do it as soon as you're in the area. To tame them, you have to feed them creatures that you've killed. So I started out by taking my revenge on the Microraptor population. Well, do you not care? Okay. So These guys were a little too small to feed the hawks. They didn't seem to like them very now, much. let's see. So I found a Brano. But since I had killed it with the Andrew, it didn't count. I had found that if you kill it on a mount, you have to dismount in order for it to count. I managed to tame two fjord hawks before I had to run home because it wasn't even night and I had an ice cube and I was slowly dying. Yeah, I'll come up here or something? Oh, wait, no, I know what I'll do. I was making the moves that I could to get back to base quickly, but I couldn't do it. So, figured, let's put the fjord hawk to the test. I balled up my Andrew, took my items, and I waited for death's cold embrace. Okay, so I died. I respawned in my house and, and my hawk brought back all it? my stuff. Oh, there's there's my hawk. Hey, buddy. Okay, there's my hawk. There's my stuff. And <laughs> there's my guys. Yay! We did it. There was no consequences to my actions. Yay! Day nine. I started building a little bridge so I didn't have to take the long way to get around and back into my base. I used some more of the items that the Viking mod had to offer, and I also took a little time to gather Team up some metal when I found a 150 pteranodon. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> and down. Maybe down. Here we go. I use some pteranodon meat to tame it up. If it eats on its own kind, it gets stronger. No, it doesn't. Had to head back to the base, though, because this cold was brutal. The spot I chose to live in was kind of crazy, like, all the time. But it proves for some good entertainment while I freeze oh, my butt off. Stay go. Uh oh. Come on, get him. Oh no. Day 10. I wanted to do some more exploring, and even though the Pteranodon was all tamed up, I wanted to use the canoe. The mod I was using had a cool Viking skin I could use. There was a little island I had seen, and I wanted to take the canoe over, because why not? I knew that there were leads on this map, but I wasn't entirely sure if they would attack me in the canoe. There was a 50-50 shot of this island being a friendly island. Sometimes that's the way of art. Sometimes it's a herbivore island, and sometimes it's a carnivore island. Lucky me. It was a nasty, nasty swamp. The plan was to run around, but no, we don't touch foot in the swamp. So flying we go. I spent a little time hitting and gathering stuff because new area, you gotta hit stuff. That's just what you do. There were some aberration type mushrooms, and you can also get organic polymer from these dead dinos on the ground. Now, even though I was flying, I had to be careful with capros. Beginner area is always near the swamp. Why? <laughs> I found all the typical swamp creatures along with the little swamp village. I love how they added all this type of stuff. I took my week to round it and fight a spinal, all while trying to avoid a cap rope. I then ran out of stamina fighting a paraser, which almost killed me. Oh no! Oh no, he's out of stamina! Uh oh. Pteranodon! Go! Go! Oh. Without <laughs> a stamp. But, oh, I went oh, back to oh, finish the job. It's almost done. Nice. Day 11. I must have been living on a wreck spawn because they kept spawning in my backyard. There was a 145 that had cleared everything out. Now, normally I would trap a rex, but I had a pretty good high point for my base. At the time, I wasn't sure if I was going to use rexes or not for the boss fight, but I couldn't pass up a female 145. It took a little bit, and she knew some parkour. Uh, uh, hey! Really? She eventually started torpor running towards the beach. There was just so much bad stuff down there. Rexes, aloes, and alphas. Oh my! <laughs> ah, this wasn't happening. Did not like... Oh. Now, now she's just in a terrible area. The spawns were so high, I'm sure the time would come again. So, change of plans. I eventually needed rune stones to battle the mini bosses of this map, so I went alpha hunting. First one we're going after is the Carno who tried to disrupt my team earlier. Yes. I also took down some rappers. The Andrew pack was decimating. Oh, that was easy. Easy. Day 12. I needed a little help with resource gathering, so I found a Dodicarus nearby my base and I tried to tame it up. It was such a high level and eventually it ended up balling up on me. 
When they do that, it's pretty much impossible to tame them. And they just take so many more tranks to knock out. But I'm stubborn. Or stupid. Whatever you want to call it. And I kept at it until I ran out of ammo. Over a hundred arrows of ammo. Such a waste. I stayed around my base crafting what I could as well as making blood packs as I wanted to tame Fjordor exclusive creature the Desmodus. Basically I drained myself dry and I just respawned in my bed. This method can be useful when taming blood stalkers as they require blood packs to tame as well. Once I was done hemorrhaging I built a bridge to help me get the creatures over the metal nodes a little easier. Day 13. I took the blood packs I made to a nearby cave in search for a Desmodus. They tend to spawn in many of the caves in this map, as well as the artifact caves. You can also find them on the swamp island at night. In the cave, I had a Fjordog that was flying around me and he had a backpack. <laughs> and then I got attacked by a spider. Oh no. I've been webbed. Uh oh. This could be the shortest adventure ever. I managed to survive, but now it was cold again. Then I got attacked by Onik, who gave me the rabies, and I ended up dying. I'm not gonna die? Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. I spawned back at base, then I headed back with an Andrew Sarkis for extra protection. I figured my first time taming, I'd go for whatever I could get. That's usually how it goes. If you get one dino of that species, then it's usually easier to get the second one. I balled up my Andrew and I found some Desmodus. I don't think it's going to reach. I shot it to get aggro on me because I actually wanted it to attack me because this is how you tame them. Oh, it did it from downtown. All right. So you need the blood packs in the last spot and they will just pick you up. Now, depending on the level is how many times they need to actually pick you up. This was a low level, so it didn't take very long to tame. Yes. But as soon as it was done taming, it was fighting the other bat that came down with it. Ooh, get him. I helped it out by shooting at it, and then proceeded to ball my brand new Desmodus. I gathered some crystal outside the cave from these green rocks, and I headed back to base. Got this bat saddled up just in time since the Rex just jumped over my fence and started to attack. Uh-oh! Uh-oh! This is bad. This is bad. Everyone collectively took him out, though, and we got a bunch of blood packs from it. Remember when I said it's easier to get your second one? These guys produce so many blood packs so easily, and the level, it doesn't matter. I took out my bat to see what it could do, and I attacked everything in the area. Day 14. I needed a mammoth so I could harvest wood a little easier. I found a couple to choose from, but I was having a hard time choosing, so the game chose for me in a weird way. I guess we could just pick whichever one. What was that? That was weird. What just happened? Did it despawn? What? <laughs> what was that? You're the male. Uh... Okay, that was that was really weird. So I netted the other one and I proceeded to knock it out. It broke out and I just had to chase it down on the bat, which was awesome since you can shoot off the back of these guys. I put some berries in it and I put the sanguine elixir to some use. The elixir automatically gives you 30% taming on any creature you use it on. Once it was tamed, we were definitely dominating the lumber game. I spent the rest of the day gathering wood and killing alphas I saw for runes. Day 15. I needed another utility dino and I wanted a cool X Anki. So I headed on over to the volcano island which had a lot of X dinos. I found myself a low level X Anki to tame in a safe-ish area. I don't know. This whole island was butt. I don't know if I did or not. Oh, he's cool looking. But we gotta get these guys. I killed the aloes to make it a little safer for me and the Anki broke out. So I tranked it from a rock and I decided to go for a swim. You gonna go in the water? Yep. There are like 27 circuits before coming back to shore and taking one more dart. Oh, that's it. That's all it took. All right. I used some elixir and berries. Took my new Anki home to gather up some metal, which was super useful since up to this point I was gathering by hand. It's day 16. Did a little basic grooming today and some more gathering. Made a couple of changes to the base. Then I went out to search for some rare flowers so I could make the domesticated beehive. There was a lot of honey around my base, but if I can just have a supply at home, then why not? It was also getting a wee bit crowded, so I extended the fence out just a little bit more. Day 17. I spent the day exploring the various question marks on the map. I found a few different castles and neat looking structures at each one. One had dwarven like mines and some stuff looking really Lord of the Ringsy. Day 18. I started off in the early morning hours where it was still dark. Since I had been exploring, I stumbled upon some Deinonychus Ignis. 
Now with the Desmodus, I could go invisible at night, which made getting Deinonychus eggs a breeze. I didn't find really any impressive levels, so I took what was there and I stopped by the Volcano Island since it was time to get some oil. There was also a pretty chill island nearby, which I figured I'd get a Moss Chops to gather some fiber, since gathering everything by hand in the amounts I was doing blows. I didn't happen to find one on those islands that required something that I had, so as I was working my way home, I found one that wanted cooked prime meat. It was close to my base, so I picked it up and dropped it in my fence. I killed off one of the many Bronos that were around my base to get raw prime meat to cook it and tamed it up. I made a little torch bit to hatch some of the poopy Deinonychus eggs I had. They literally just shrunk up the regular Deinonychus and they were just like, this is the baby. <laughs> well, its stats were awful. So I went back out that night to the nest, picking up every egg I saw. I figured if any of the ones I got weren't good, I could just use it for kibble. Which Deinonychus eggs will give you the highest tier of kibble. Day 19. The highest Deinonychus I got was a level 135, so I hatched that one along with a few of the next highest levels. I decided since I was level 95, I could make the Magmasaur saddle, that would be my next thing to do. Luckily I had the bat, so I could go invisible at night and steal an egg. So I waited till night to do my heist. There really wasn't many nests in the volcano, and the highest level was a level 100, and figures the one that I wanted had magma stars crawling all over it. There is just a moment after you dismount while you're still invisible. Get out! Get out! <laughs> Go! I yoinked that egg and I booked it out. Which way's out? This way! This way's out! <laughs> Day 20. I hatched up my egg to get a little magma baby. I did a lot of the same things around base today, gathered, got the occasional drop if I saw it, you know. All the arc stuff. Day 21. I headed off to find some beaver dams because I needed some cementing base. I always hate looting dams. I was hoping I could also get some pearls, but I only managed to get a little bit of paste. I went to the swamp to do some frog taming so I could potentially use it for making cementing base. I found a 145 that I took back to base, I netted it, and I knocked it out. And I tamed it up with some mutton. Productive days, as the magma star was all grown up, I was able to harvest some metal at a much faster rate. Day 22. Okay, I headed back to the beaver stuff. dams to get even more cementing paste. They were not happy. Get them all. This is so many. <laughs> oh no. Good, good, good. Is that everybody? I brought my new frog to help me with some additional dams. But it really was no help at all, really. I was just too fat for the frog. So that was pointless. Inventory is too... I can't, it can't even hold me. <laughs> Day 23. The frog needed some levels, so I spent some time killing things around my base. Gathered some metal and decided to build a taming pen. There were just so many rexes that spawned in this area, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to use them for boss fights or not, but at least this would make it much easier. Day 24. Today was the first time I went into the realm room. There were three more worlds to visit on Fjordor, and you can access them from this room. So today I wanted to head to Asgard to find some R dire wolves. I love that this map had the different variants of creatures to pick from. I eventually found a level 145 direwolf that I knitted and knocked out. There we go. Alright. And we're gonna trank you out. While that one was taming, I had found another 145 direwolf that was a male. Knocked it out just as easy. The plan was to get some babies from the pair to make a pack. Day 25. Since I, I spent the night, it. it was pretty easy to explore some yeah. more in the morning. Is that a wyvern? You serious? At the time, I didn't know Wyvern spawned in this part of the map, so luckily I managed to avoid any. I found a 150 Maywing that could definitely be useful. Maywings lay eggs at all kibble levels. So if you have a pair, then you just have constant eggs just coming from every single level. I fed it some meat, and shortly after, I tamed another for eggs. I teleported myself home, and I got the wolves making some babies. Yep, so the mating is happening. Day 26. The babies didn't take too long to pop out and raise up. We took a little visit to a cave I could get some chitin from. There were a lot of bugs. Alright, well those guys are fine. Lots and lots of bugs. Come down here. I mostly needed a lot of cementing paste to be able to get things like the industrial forge. There they go, they're getting it. Day eat 27. It. Eat them, eat them, eat them. I headed out to the swamp to hopefully take the frog out to eat the bugs that may be there for some more cementing paste. I know, cementing paste, cementing paste. But that's what I need. Had the wolves and bat file for some extra protection because everything sucks here. Literally. You guys gonna go run around chasing that one bug? Got a little organic polymer as well from the dead dinos. As I approached my base, I found a cool tech rex that the level wasn't really that bad. What? So I tried to lure it into the pen I built, but it was too. stuck in a rock, so yes. I guess that was fine too. 
Um, this Diplo wouldn't chill out the whole time, though. I gave the Rex some meat after it dropped, and while I was waiting for the team up, I made myself the Industrial Forge. The Tech Rex teamed up just in time for me to grab it before this other Rex had a chance to eat it. Its stats weren't great, but eh, it was a Tech Rex. Day 28. I placed down a new building so I could place down my industrial forge. Harvested all the nearby metal I could and I got it cooking. Most of this day was spent organizing my things along with gathering. Day 29. Today I started my day in Vanaheim, which was another one of the worlds that you could teleport to. I hadn't checked out this realm yet and I wanted to see if there was anything worth taming here. I did find a dung beetle which would be helpful with making fertilizer. Please. I just used some spoiled oh, meat today. Okay, that's all it took. Normally, you use poop, but right. I didn't have to go. Nothing else really caught my eye until I found the poison wyvern trench. On Fjordor, each realm was home to a specific wyvern type. Since I could use the Desmodus here, I waited till night to go invisible so I could somewhat safely grab an egg. Unfortunately, all the eggs were absolute trash. Day 30. I was hoping that I could find another otter in the past two realms I visited, but no luck. I knew the last one, Jotunheim, was very cold, and if I wanted to explore it, then I would need the protection of an otter. I did find out that there were some in the Redwoods part of the main map, so I tried looking there. But instead, I found a 135R Thyla that I thought would be pretty cool to have for any caves that I might do. Okay, you ain't gonna come up here. Alright, I guess we're just taming you here. That's it. <laughs> oh... All right. Okay. <laughs> oh gosh. I had to edit it a couple times, but eventually I knocked it out. Okay, it's out, it's out, it's out. I used some cooked lamb chop and I had teamed it up. I never did find any otters though. Day 31. I spent most of this day doing some things around the base, gathering mostly for metal and narcotics. I did this since I wanted to go back to the Magmasar cave at night to possibly get a higher Magmasar egg. Nighttime egg snatching is the best with Desmodus' ability to go invisible. Makes it pretty low for us. Go and check that out as well. Well, when I went back, the same crusty eggs were there, so I decided to try and find a high level wyvern egg. There were a couple of high level eggs, but I found a max level 190 wyvern egg, so I decided I had to take this one. Okay, here we go. We're out. Nope. Nope. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Got my buns a little it. toasted, just but I made one. it out okay. Just <laughs> He didn't though. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> uh, I... <laughs> Where did he go? <laughs> Day 32. I got myself some sulfur and oil, and I headed back to base to hatch up my baby wyvern. And the baby is born! Little baby. Oh, wow. If only this was a deep sea wyvern, because, you know, look at that oxygen. But overall, it really wasn't that great stat wise. Stan was the highest, too, but maybe this would be my fire breathing baby. It also wasn't a great color, so I might have to go back and find another. Day 33. In the early morning, I went back to the volcano to go back and snatch the 185 egg I had seen the day before. Here we go. I had a few wyverns on my tail here, so I tried to outmaneuver them since I didn't believe that I could take them all on. Oh, they're following us. Oh no. Oh no. My stamina! It's almost done! Can I make it to this island? If I can make it to this island, then I think they'll lose aggro. I flew to a nearby island where I had tried to lose them in the trees. Try to lose them in the trees here. Try to do this. The inhabitants of the island were not too happy that I brought the Wrath of Fire down on them. Nope. Alright, they're stuck. They're stuck. They're stuck. Okay, we're okay. Being distracted okay, by the locals, I made my escape, thinking I was all good. The... Nope. They're still following me. <laughs> oh no. They didn't care when I took the 190, but the 185, it was a problem. I tried losing them in some of the rock structures. I wasn't even worried about them chasing me so much as following me all the way back to my base since it was pretty close to where I was now. So I spent some time hiding out in the trees. 
And once enough time went by, I went home. The 190 was all grown up and I had made myself a chemistry rinse, so doing great. Since I had a wyvern now, I could pick up many more dinos to tame. So I went out looking for a megatherium. We were going to need some for the fight for the bosses later on. Tranking out was no problem with the taming trap. So I fed it some honey and tamed it up with some okay points in melee. Day 34. So in the morning I headed to the snow mountains across the way and found a 150. I tamed it up and the new perfect megatherium was worse than the previous one. She had slightly better melee but not by much. I was going to need two identical babies in stats the mom's melee and the dad's health. I could always breathe in another stat later but I figured I would at least get started. Day 35. I had seen a 150R snow owl near my base that seemed like a pretty cool thing to tame. They can help heal up dinos and if I was going to start breeding, it seemed like a faster option than trying to force feed everyone. I used the net to trap it and then I used the 4 gate bird crap trap as I trapped it. Alright, so let's uh, I'll just start shooting you. No! Oh, you can get out! Ah! Alright, didn't work. Alright. We're just gonna chase you down. I think we'll just net you again. Okay, wait. Um <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if the holes were too big or if it just doesn't work on them. Last time I had tamed one was when Extinction first came out, so the snow owl tactics are foreign to me. But I do remember them having a problem with taming that I couldn't tame it the same way I would tame an RG, even though they're the same size and basically act the same. They're just an owl. Luckily, since I could shoot off the back of the bat, I managed to net it again with the saber tooth on the butt. Oh, come on. Stupid saber tooth. All right. I proceeded to trank it out until the net broke where I had to chase it down. Wait, it's gonna land. When it landed, I just netted again and I tranked it out until it was out. Easy. Okay. <laughs> nice. Out. It tamed up pretty quickly oh. with some prime, and then I went home to check on the baby megatheriums. Which is I didn't get good. a single good baby. Wow. <laughs> Done. Day 36. I went out to search for anything good I could tame, and I found a 130 male megatherium. Sometimes you have better luck with a slightly lower number just because of how the points are distributed once it's tamed. While that was taming, I went out to find a low-level snow owl to tame just so I could have more owl pellets since I was considering doing some gacha taming. Found a level 15, which was much easier to tame. I also found a 135 megatherium to tame as well, and I just kept dropping in the nearby megatheriums to tame. Day 37. I had many different megatheriums to choose from. Eventually, I picked a female with the highest melee and a male with the highest health, which surprisingly came from the original 130 megatherium. Got them to breeding and I spent the rest of my day taking the wyverns to gather as much crystal and obsidian as they could carry. Day 38. Made a few more upgrades to the base. I also finally got some crops started. I had plenty of fertilizer from the dung beetle stored up. At night, I looked for more Deinonychus eggs. None were high levels, but at least they could be used for kibble. Day 39. I had a lot of babies popping out and I finally got my breeding pair of megatheriums all grown up. So, now it's time for them to get to it. Basically, I wanted mutations in either melee or health with a male baby. The females could all be kept because they would have all identical stats. Day 40. Most of my days right now were spent gathering and waiting for babies. Couldn't solve the baby problem easily, but the gathering, I could tame gotchas. I had a bunch of owl pellets now too, so that seemed like a plan. I remember seeing some before in the two other realms that I had visited. I hadn't found any in Asgard like I did before, so I searched Vanaheim and I found a whole little gacha pool party. The highest I found was a level 140. So I dropped a bunch of pellets around here and dealt with any other problems in the area. Please don't get upset. No, 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 no. And she tamed out and had a rare resource, black pearls. I wanted to find another high level male so I could have more gotchas producing any of the resources I needed. Also while I was there, I collected a bunch of gacha crystals. And while I was collecting, the highest level male I could find was level 100. Ew. <laughs> Once it tamed out, it offered sap, so that's not too bad. I figured since I had the pellets, I'd try for the other level 100 that I had seen, and they offered oil. Which was a little bit more useful than the other ones that I had. 
I was kind of hoping for a crystal gotcha though, so I would need to breed for one. Day 41. Picked up as many gotcha crystals as I could find and then I teleported out. I was close to the Deinonychus nest, so just cause it was pretty easy to take their eggs, I went back to look -see, and I'm glad I did, because I found a 145 egg. 145? Oh man, okay, that's good. Hopefully it's a male. I headed back home to incubate and to get the gotchas I just got to breed. While waiting, the Megatherium dropped some twins that weren't exactly what we needed. Now the only reason I bring this up is if you have a mating pair with the exact same stats and level, when their babies come out they will come the exact same stats as the parents. So if the level goes up by 2 points on the baby that means there's a mutation. That's an easy way to tell if you're mass producing babies or egg hatching to figure out quickly which ones to pull out. Not everyone plays with mods so it's an easy way to kind of distinguish this. I hatched up the Deinonychus and it happened to be another girl. Which was unfortunate since it would take me an extra breeding back and forth to get all the correct stats on the Deinonychus I had to make a breeding pair. <sighs> I needed some better news so I decided to see what goodies I got from the gotcha crystals. While I was feeding the gotchas they popped out some twins. They didn't really give me anything different than what I already had, so I had to keep them going for Crystal Gotcha and possibly a Silica Pearl Gotcha. It took another two babies for me to get the Gotcha baby that produced crystals though. Oh, we got a crystal baby! Alright. Day 42. Much of this day was spent doing the same thing as before. Needed some feeding trials for all the new babies as it was going to start getting crazy. The pair I had wasn't producing fast enough, but the whole time I had kept the females and one boy. So all these babies had the identical stats to the parents to any babies they produced would do the same. Now with the group, I could get about 8 females to a male. So that just increased the amount of babies at a time, which allowed for more chances of a mutation. Now even though I was playing with mods, I wasn't playing with any actual like mutation baby mods. The mods that I was using just collect the babies a little bit faster so it was easier for me to see things. But even with mods, this is a very long process. The chances of getting a mutation is less than 10%, so expect to go through a lot when trying to get mutations. Days 43 to 44. I did much of the same. While I waited for the babies, I gathered drops and anything else I may have needed. Didn't really get anything exciting from them, the gotchas actually offered me better stuff. After all this time, I finally got a health mutation on a Megatherium. It's frustrating as it has to be a male, but it makes it much easier and cleaner to do. You pretty much just replace the male each time there's a mutation in the stat you want. Day 45. I needed a break from some of the breeding, so I decided to go cave exploring. I was going to need some artifacts, so I went to the cave with two artifacts. It's kind of OP, but you can just fly anywhere with the Desmodus. I was hoping for some good drops. Uh, okay, I mean, I don't need Ascending Claw Club. <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever needed those, but cool. I easily grab the yeah, artifact of the pack and the artifact of the clever. Alright, so that's the artifact of the pack. Found. Uh. Alright, artifact of the clever. The drops weren't popping, but I was hoping to head to another cave that I had heard was a definite loot gold mine. I'm gonna pass out. That would be terrible. It'd be so awful. Any loot? No loot. Just spiders. What are you guys doing? Sometimes there's loot there. Oh, you eating your buddy? That's great. Supposed to be loot in this cave. Everybody's just... It might be just because I didn't load it in yet. Look, look at everybody. Everybody's just stagnant. I was disappointed to find no loot, nothing Falling but off. bugs and bats. Maybe don't load in when we... Uh... Day 46. I eventually ended up with the Silica Per Gacha, and it was a great thing. At this point, I didn't really need to go out anymore for anything rare, and I was getting better loot from the gotchas than what I had in the cave so far. I ended up finally getting my first melee mutation. At this point, the plan was just to use the Megatherium Deinonychus to go to the boss fights, but I couldn't pass up the free high-level Rexes that kept falling into my pen. Trapped himself. I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm gonna trank him out. Day 47. I wanted to do another cave, so I went to visit the Apparition Cave which is exactly what it sounds like. Any aberration resources and creatures could be found in this cave. I was also told this cave had a bunch of good loot, so I took my thyla to make it a little spicy. But this kind of sucked. Uh, wow. <laughs> An ascendant Fiomia saddle. Oh man, battle pig. 
there was only one drop. And I decided to make it another round because I kept having a problem with things really not loading until I went into the area. But that didn't matter. There was nothing else, so this was a cave that I'd have to try again on another day. When I got back to base, I got another melee mutation with the Megatherium. Oh, now you're like ugly poop green. That's cool. Day 48. I finally got my breeding pair for the Deinonychus, so I could finally start breeding for mutations. I got a Volanosaur Ascendant Saddle a while back in a drop, so I decided to go out later to find a high level Volanosaur to possibly use for the mini boss fights on Fjordor. I found a 145, which I more or less easily tamed. Oh, that looks so stupid! <laughs> Can I net you? Yes. Alright. Now we can get some headshots, maybe? Are you out? I can't tell. Oh, you're unconscious! Yes! Okay. Day 49. I found a 140 female Velanosaur that I tamed up as well. Since I had a good breeding setup now, I figured why not try for some mutations. Unfortunately, this Velanosaur's stamina was worse. When I got home, I found a 120 male Tecrex terrorizing my base. Its level wasn't great, but I decided to tame it anyway because I could still use the stats of the better female with the babies. Day 50. Spent most of this day just getting more female Deinonychus to have separate melee and health groups. I had a billion babies running out on at one point because I ran out of soul balls, so that was a lot of fun. Day 51. I did a little cave prep, and I took myself to the cave where I could get the artifact of the hunter. It's kind of crazy you can just bring the Desmodus into caves as it makes it pretty easy to get into the entrance. I did have to break a wall to get into the main part of the cave. And I think it's pretty straight from here. Keep on over here, which I think we can go down here as well. Yeah, it's so bright though. Oh my gosh. Be up here, but doesn't look like it's here. Um, yeah. It's supposed to be right here. So. At first, I thought I made a wrong turn because the artifact wasn't really rendered in yet, which was a constant problem for me on this map. That was so weird. I wanted to explore the water a little bit for some drops, so I put some sleeping bags down and I brought my Thyla into the water. I just got chased around by a bunch of piranhas, but that was pretty much the only bad thing down there. There was nothing here, so I headed out where I saw some light. So here. Oh, it's so foggy. This is stupid. That drop? No, that's a shiny rock. Shiny rock. Oh my gosh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's bad. Only to get jumped by a Perlovia. Oh no. Then they demolished me. Oh no. Good thing I had sleeping bags back down as the Fjord Hawk had brought me all my stuff back. And then I just used grapples to get right, my way back is... up to my Desmodus. There's Vengeance. <laughs> Did he kill everything? Oh my gosh. I feel like we should bring the Thyla out too. I brought out the Thyla for some extra muscle as I made my way out of the cave. It wasn't a clear exit and I had to tunnel my way out. Is this the way out? <gasps> Looks like a way out. Yeah, let's go. Okay, you get down. Okay, then we are on our way out. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> Day 52. More babysitting, and getting mutations, and getting gotcha loot. Day 53. Went out for another artifact cave today, bringing the fully loaded Andrew Sarkis. And I went for a little dip to get into the cave entrance, which was located underwater. Then I had to fly up to get to the beginning area. I'm glad I brought out the Andrews since there were big boy bats in the cave. I had to clear out the area before getting a loot drop that had nothing I needed. Drop real quick. This is honestly the first one I've seen in eons, and of course I don't get anything I need. Well, I could always grind up the stuff. Now, I was playing the real Tomb Raider in this game. There were spikes and mazes and puzzles I had to solve to get the door open. There were these colored stones with numbers located all over this labyrinth. I had to press them in the order that I saw them, the corresponding number, in order to get through. Anything happening? <gasps> Stuff's happening. All right. I eventually found a red drop, which offered me the super duper cool OP item. Oh my gosh. Um, well, you, you guys seen it here, so. I was slightly worried about this being an Indiana Jones situation, so I put down some sleeping bags before grabbing the artifact of the massive. Luckily, that wasn't the case. 
and I just had to hit the button to get me out of the room. But honestly, I didn't feel like going through this maze again, so I just teleported out of the whole thing, since I didn't want to get hit with any more spikes and darts. Day 54 to 56. Any base day was spent gathering resources and waiting for mutations. This is how I spent a lot of my time with these days. When I would get bored, I would just head out to look for other possible dinos to tame and loot drops. I was hoping for a better long knife, as well as better saddles for any of the boss dinos, but I didn't have any such luck. Day 57. I had been searching for a high level Giga as I wanted to fight some of the mini bosses soon. What's that? Is that a Giga? <gasps> That's a Giga. After days and well, weeks, you? I finally found 140. a 140R right, that'll be that good. sporting the phoenix okay, neck colors. So wanna, I had made a large metal gate behemoth gate because either. there happened to be a canyon be that made a perfect Giga trap. In the many times that I kept coming over this area, I kept seeing Giga okay. spawn and spawn. Get away from me. Oh. All right. Come on. Come on. Okay. Come on. There we go. Okay, metal door. Once I placed the trap, it was just a matter of luring her into the hole. Yes. You do it. Now time to start shooting. There we go. All right. Now we're here for 42 years, guys. Day 58. Literally, I have been shooting this thing for a whole in-game day. I eventually switched to my crossbow, which did even more than the long neck. I wish I had done this sooner. Oh, it's down. Oh, well, I guess it's better late than never, right? With a combination of the sanguine and extraordinary kibble, she tamed up pretty fast. And, uh, oh, we are good. Yay. Good thing, too, as I almost died of frostbite. Oh, man, that would have been a good name for her. You know what? Comment down below if you think I should have named her frostbite. Day 59. I didn't want to do it again, but I was going to have to find a male Giga to breed with the one who should have been named Frostbite. I went to the same area as they are constantly spawning there, and I found a 135 male R Giga oh, who shit. just looked angry. It took a big old chunk out of me, but I managed to trap it just the same. Ooh. Oh, so scary. <laughs> This one only took a whole half a there day to knock out yeah. since I used my better crossbow than the long neck to take it down. Day 60. After the Giga finished up taming, I brought it home and now it was time to do some Giga breeding. I wanted the best stats of both on two babies so then I could breed it for mutated ones. I hadn't planned on going this far with this line since I didn't need a crazy amount of stacks for the mini bosses and at the end of the day, a Giga is still a Giga. Days 61 to 65. These days were spent like many days before. Gathering, breeding, and getting mutations. It didn't take me long to get a breeding pair of Gigas, so then I could start getting mutations on them. I was getting lots and lots of mutation babies. Had to be something in the air. Days 66 through 68. I had five Valentine's Day mutants that I took to various parts of the map to wreak havoc. I wanted to have a few more levels before I fought any bosses, but these guys were nasty. I searched mostly for alphas to kill as I needed to get a few more runes before I could summon the mini bosses. Day 69. Figured I'd do something special with the day and I made a date with the queen bee herself, Bela. Can you fit? It wasn't a warm welcome, but it's cool. Nothing was going to stop me. I gave her 30 free stones and she repaid them by stinging me and gassing me in my face. Good thing I brought protection. Oh, we are melting her. She didn't stand a chance. Get her. Get her. Get her. Done. That was easy. 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 Look at this thing. Ugh. The only thing I received from her that was useful was the Bela relic and the element. The other things I could grind up for materials. I was hoping this would work out, but it looks like I'm not going to be seeing her again. Day 70. Shooter's cold in general was bad, but I had heard that Jotunheim's was downright brutal. I had some free curry, but it didn't do anything. Ooh, I am freezing. I'm not doing good here. I had to leave. There would be no way to survive without really good fur armor or an otter. I didn't have better armor yet, so I went out searching for an otter in the redwoods and came up empty. To be honest, I hadn't seen an otter yet at this point in my playthrough. Day 71. So I wasn't looking out finding any otters, so I had to go get some wyvern milk, which could help me with the cold. You can only get the milk if you knock out a female wyvern. So I searched for a lower level one in the trench. The level doesn't matter, you'll always get the same amount, it just has to be female. Unless you happen to find and kill an alpha wyvern, whether it's male or female, then you'll get much more milk. 
Downside to the milk is it has a 30 minute spoil timer and it doesn't stack in your inventory. So if you have 50 of them in 30 minutes go by, that's it, it's all gone. Once I had my milk, I headed back to Jotunheim. I drank some and put the rest of my Desmos inventory so I get a little bit more time on the spoil timer. I was doing okay once I drank the milk. And even if I didn't want to, I figured I could knock out an Ice Wyvern in here if I needed more milk. The plan here was to find a Uteranus I could use for boss fights. There were plenty of Uteranuses around here, and it didn't take long before I found a 145X Uteranus. I netted it and then put a ring of Dino Gates around it to trap it. Well, I thought they couldn't get through the regular Dino Gates, but it can. Can you get me? Oh, 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 oh no. Oh no. Well, at least it's not in the worst. Oh no, that's awful. It got through. Oh, this is going to be bad. So I had to net a few times, all while trying to avoid the fear roar. Oh, gotta get up. There we go. I pelt it with a bunch of arrows, then I wait for it to get up and do it again. But I was definitely on a time crunch as I only had so much milk left. I finally managed to knock it out, and I used some sanguine and extraordinary kibble to try and tame it up as fast as I could. They usually take a long time to eat, but it doesn't take much kibble to tame them. Sucks here. <laughs> and I can't survive. When it finally ate, it was at 96.8%. Are you serious? It's 96.8? Oh no. My time with the warm buff ran out, so I had no choice but to try and weather the cold, hoping the UD would tame before then. I had my finger on the trigger of my soul gun, hoping I could grab it before I died. Yep. <laughs> well, I was safe with my stuff due to the Fjordhawk, but like a dummy, I picked the wrong bed somehow. No worries, I'll go with my stuff on I spawn back to pick up my tamed Uteranus. I didn't have very long to get to it. As soon as I got back, I started dying from the cold. I did pick up my UD and immediately got attacked by a day. Don. Did you have anything? Oh, you had, uh, stuff. Ooh! Get that piggy! And I'm oh, thinking, no. I was gonna die here again. <laughs> I almost did, but managed to get out by teleporting to a random spot. Alright, let's get out of here. With just a broken leg, I was back in the redwoods. I feel like killing myself anyway. I'm gonna kill myself anyway. This is stupid. I thought since I was on the cusp of death anyway, I should just kill myself by a dire bear so I could just spawn back home. Well, here's the thing. I didn't realize at the time that fjord hogs have cooldown timers on when they bring your stuff back, which you could see by the little bag on the side. Now, I just thought it was a weird bug because I was experiencing a lot of weird bugginess with the fjord hog at the time. So, unsure of what was happening at the time, I just spent the rest of the night looking for my stuff. Day 72. Luckily, I had another Fjordhawk I could use and a Wyvern, and I headed out to where I had died in the Redwoods. I was able to find my bag, but I could not find my Fjordhawk. Maybe he was mad at me about my abuse of power. My second Fjordhawk also shared this anger since I had a cooldown on being able to get my stuff back. I needed one more dino to help me with the boss fight, so I went out to Asgard to tame up a 140R Deodon. It wasn't too difficult to tame. I netted it, shot it, and once it broke out, chased it down with darts till it passed out. I quickly cable tamed it and headed home. Between everything, I didn't have a chance to really check out the stats of the UT or the Deodon, but these UT stats weren't great for a boss. I didn't need to mutate it, but I would definitely need to level it in the right stats. It would be a little bit before I could go to Jotunheim again. I don't think I could deal with Wyvern Milk again, so I would need better armor or the tech canteen to be able to last in that realm. Day 73. This was a pretty chill day for me, as I just stayed around the base working on mutations and such. Day 74. I headed to Asgard to fight Hadi and Skull, the two wolf mini-bosses. If you spawn in the northeast of Asgard, their summon portal is right there. I went a little overboard on this one, since I was fighting two bosses here. I had five gigas. We're summoning them. Oh, that's kind of creepy. Alright, get them. Get him. Oh, oh, this is disgusting. We're <laughs> I don't know what I was worried about. Skull has been defeated. Oh, get him, get him, get him. I think we could have done it with the two gigas we had. Skull was barely in it, and it only took a few more seconds for Hottie to be very anticlimactic. Even though they gave double the loot, I didn't really get anything I needed except the relics. Anything I wasn't using, I would just grind up. Day 75. I fought the boss wolves for a second time, this time using less gigas. Any of the mini bosses, you can fight them once every in game day or once every hour in real life. I was planning on farming them as much as I could since they were much easier to fight. Day 76. I went to another artifact cave in the nasty, nasty swamp. 
I needed the Andrew saddle for protection since this cave was toxic, along with having other Desmodus in there. There were the usual swamp critters in here, but it wasn't too difficult to make my way through to get the artifact of the brood. All right, which artifact is this? Artifact of the Brute. Got it. I explored it for a good bit after, but yet another cave without any good loot. Day 77. I took the Andrew out to find me a rainbow whale. We're more than three-fourths through this playthrough, and I have not been in the water yet. So I went through a lot of scrubs, but I eventually found a 145 Basilosaurus. The toughest thing about taming them is just clearing out the area around them and make it safe. Now he's all by his lonesome. Should be good. All right, there we go, and we got it. Day 78, I almost lost my brand new whale. I threw it out to get some levels and it got attacked by an Alpha Megadon and it's grew. Oh no. I'm coming to save you. The Basilosaurus is gonna die that I just got. I had to jump in with the Andrew to save it. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Oh no. I was getting ready to level this guy up, and then this uh, this guy just attacked me out the blue. Get him. Get him. Okay. Then after that fight, me? a jellyfish attacks it. Oh, no. Uh... Jeez. Everything coming out to get me. I thought it was okay. Then it swam off. Now, where are you going? No, I'm not gonna go. <laughs> to go after it's all buggy. It ran away. <laughs> Come back here. And I had a little me freak out before finding it again, just chilling by the shore. Okay, jeez, it was pretty hurt, so I had to heal it up a little bit before I could go out into the underwater cave I had planned to do. Once I got the health and levels, I set out for another artifact cave. The cave was very linear, and I took each group of creatures carefully so I didn't get overwhelmed. Uh, with the rainbow whale, a lot of times they'll take damage if they're too low, but it's like, it's so little, it's so little. It's just, it's more annoying than anything. It's probably the hardest thing right now. They're so tough. Oh, all of them? All right, well, good thing we leveled up our health. These guys are like T-Rexes. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, 190. Ew. And I encountered another laggy artifact. Almost everyone was like this so far for me on Fjordor, so just kind of stay in the area if you're experiencing the same problem, and it'll eventually spawn in. So I just went through the cave again, and I came back to where the artifact was supposed to be, picking up the artifact of the battle. Uh, just make sure nothing's near me. All right, I'm gonna go get this. All right, there we go. We got the artifact of the devourer. Yeah, it just didn't spawn in yet. Days 79 to 82. More babysitting and mutation days. Got a couple of mutants. Day 83. I was spending some time looking for loot drops and looking out for any weird caves that might have some. I did find a little entrance in the redwoods and I wasn't quite sure if this was a serious cave or not. So I went in exploring with the Andrew and this, and this cave had a lot of really diesel creatures. I was hoping to not find any Pergolobias, but I did find some Thylas. I had reached the dead end and I had to backtrack encountering tons of bugs in a whole honey area. I did find a little crack to wedge myself through and I finally found a loot crate. Woo! Oh, it's just a little bug. <gasps> we finally got an ascent <laughs> long neck run. I made my way down this crystal cavern to find another loot crate. Come to find out this cave was loaded with loot crates. It also happened to be an artifact cave that housed the artifact of the strong. Artifact of the strong. I didn't want to spend too much time away from the babies, but the loot in this cave respawned very fast, and they were all yellow and red drops. I got many saddles and weapons I didn't need, but I could use the materials to make the saddles I would need. Day 84. I spent another day in the Redwoods cave, looting as much as I could carry. I finally found a good blueprint for an Ascendant Megatherium saddle. I also got some of the best armor and weapons in the game. It was so good, I put it in a safe place until I needed it for the boss fights. Day 85. I built myself a little trophy room for all my artifacts and trophies, then I went out to my new home in the Redwoods. This was definitely my new routine, as I needed to find Deinonychus Saddle Blueprint if possible. 
Day 86. I headed out to another artifact cave where the entrance was located underwater. Once inside, there was an abandoned pirate ship and what looked to be a dwarven dungeon. I slowly made my way through it on the entry till I came out to an area I had to go on foot. I hate going on foot and I tried to avoid it as much as possible and even though I was getting shot at with darts, I made it through. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. <laughs> We're back to safety again. All right. I gathered up the artifact of the cunning and this is the artifact of the cunning. Now, since it was a chore to get all the way down here, I just teleported my way out. This cave didn't take me very long to do overall, so I went out to the volcano to go get another artifact. This cave was just a tunnel filled with bugs and bats. Of course, I get to the end of the cave and the artifact wasn't there. There's no artifact here. Oh, we might have to wait a moment. And like I said before, I've had this problem for literally every single artifact and a lot of the loot spawns. So I waited and waited and I waited. Here it is. Picked up the artifact of the immune. All right, artifact of the immune. Two more artifacts down and I had only one left. Day 87. Last artifact cave was a snow cave and I was cold. This cave was supposed to be difficult mostly because of the creatures that hit hard. Anybody else? Ooh. The Andrew Sarkis protected me against the Perlovia, but I wasn't able to move. So I brought out my Desmodus for a little extra help. And the bears were tough. Two fights and I was almost at half health. I saw a bunch of Perlovias and bears and I was freezing. Yeah, I was gonna have to do this cave in the air. I had to use medical brews to keep myself alive, but my plan was to fly through this cave as fast as I could. Everything was just so diesel, so I just lured everything off the cliff as best as I could. They all down there? Everything seemed to be gone except two little Perlovia balls. I was over it and I was almost done. I just threw a giga down. It took care of most of the Perlovias. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, so apparently Perlovias can knock you off a giga. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh my god, that was scary. No one is safe from the wrath. Dying from the cold and Perlovia rabies, I scooped up the artifact of the Skylord and my giga and I teleported out. That's it, we got it. I didn't even care where I teleported, but I seemed to be really close to Bela once I was out. So I had my gigas go and fight her real quick. I ended up getting an Ascendant Velanosaur saddle, which would be useful for a future fight. And I headed back to base where I completed my artifact set. So we got all our artifacts in the room now. Day 88. I kept trying for a Deinonychus saddle, so I fought the boss wolves again, not getting anything, and looted the Redwoods cave the whole time after. This was pretty much my routine now. If I didn't have a specific thing to do, I just kept searching for loot. Day 89 to 91. I took out the Rainbow Whale to search for squids, as I had not seen a single one yet. I figured I could take this time to also look for some deep sea loot crates. Well, I found a couple of crates and I didn't have anything I really needed, but I searched and searched and searched and searched this whole ocean for a squid. It wasn't until I found this hexagon butt crack in the ocean floor that I finally found one. And I did it. I finally found the one squid in the entire ocean. I had searched this whole area for about a day and a half in game, but I really just got attacked by tons and tons of alpha mosasaurs. I think I also found the world serpent. He must have spent a long time looking for calamari too, and then he just died. I was going to need more tentacles for boss fights, but like everything this playthrough, since I hadn't been to this area yet, maybe more squids needed to spawn in. Day 92. I was running out of time and I needed to get things ready for some boss prep. Out of all the times I've searched the caves and all the loot drops I went over, I managed to get two Megatherium saddle blueprints. One was a Mastercraft and one was Ascendant. Now you would think that I would go for the Ascendant, but I went back and forth on this because the Ascendant was so much more expensive for not that much more armor. So I decided to go with the Mastercraft. Any higher quality saddle blueprint was better than just the regular saddle. So this will have to do. I used a mind wipe tonic and I put all points into crafting so I could hope to get some better saddles. Since I didn't have a blueprint for the Deinonychus saddles, I just had to make regular ones for them. Day 93 to 95. I was only able to initially make 9 Megatherium saddles. The cementing place was a problem so I was going to need to farm for them as well as grind up any loot I had that could help. These next coming days I needed every minute to get resources, 
get trophies, and combine all the health and melee lines together. Once I had the babies combined, I used the baby gigas to level up the creatures quickly, and then I used the Deodon and Snow Owl to help heal them up. Day 96. I did as much as I could because I had to run out of time. I needed to face the Broodmother now so I could unlock the engrams needed for the tools to help me in the other fights. So I went to the Broodmother cave with my dinos, artifacts, and trophies to summon the Alpha Broodmother. We had one shot at this, and this was my first big boss. I wasn't sure how everyone was going to perform. If I fail, there was no beating this in 100 days. All right, here we go. I'm very nervous, but I think I think we'll be okay. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, where am I at? Okay, here we go. Let's go get her. Go over there. Go get her. Let's go. All right, let's get him up. All right, this is disgusting. All right, <laughs> here we go. I'm gonna keep him up. I don't really wanna get hit by stuff, but it seems like they're melting are pretty good. Won't take too much damage in the front. Oh, we got this, we got this. Are they even getting the, the damage plus here? I don't even know. Oh, we're good, we're good, we're golden. Oh, look at all those tech grams we got. We did it, woo hoo We didn't lose a single one, all right. It seemed that most of the front ones took about 10 to 15,000 damage even with the better saddles. My plan was to take all the chitin back to make more cementing paste so I could replace any saddles that weren't Mastercraft. I got back to base and checked out my new trophy. The Alpha Broodmother trophy, nice. I also made myself the tech replicator and the tech canteen. Day 97. I was better prepared for Jotunheim now. I had better fur armor along with the tech canteen so I was actually able to survive here now. And this cave was looking pretty nice. Oh, yeah, this is the Steinborn Summon Cave. That's what we're doing. And he's supposed to hit hard, so I brought three Gigas and my Velanosaur. I propped up my Velanosaur on a ledge, summoned Steinborn, and grappled my way up to the top. Let's get up there. Come on. Oh, is he doing stuff? Oh, attack. Get him. All right. There we go. Oh, they getting him. They getting him. Look how much damage this guy does, though. This this Velanistar is pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, we got this. I was worried about this fight. Because everyone said this fight was so hard. I mean, they're taking a little bit of a time, but... Oh, they got him. This guy looks cool, though. In the butt. In the butt. Let's go. We got and with it. that, I would have all the relics I needed. I'm glad I was able to survive the cold, which I figured out all I needed was better armor, and I didn't even need the tech canteen. Okay, so I am at... 1,133, if I take this off, that makes me 692, so then I'm freezing. So what if I take this off? Okay, so at 1,000, we're still okay. What about this one? At 746, we're freezing. So let's do this, put that on there, take that off. 866, I'm cold. So one would assume that you just need 850, 850 to 900 to be okay in this biome. Day 98. Originally, I didn't want to take the Deinonychus to the Megapithecus boss fight, but they weren't leveled up and healed enough yet. So I took my Megatherium to the Aberration Cave where you can find the summon terminal for the Megapithecus. We're doing this on Alpha. I got a little worried getting teleported in as I was a bit stuck at first. Let's, let's get in there. Can I, can I, are you gonna come over? Can I get out? Come on. Move, guy. Can we get them to go over there? Are they gonna fall? Hopefully they don't fall. Don't be falling, guys. Oh, they, they get in there. Okay. Let's go. Oh, man. That pushback there. Okay, get him. Get him. Oh, I don't know if this is gonna go. <laughs> I listed these babies in and half of them got stuck on a cliff. Let's bring them back. Okay, let, let's get these guys to follow me. You guys follow me. Come on. Come on, guys. Follow me. Get in there. Oh, I got pooped on. Nasty. All right. Half my Megatherium are not in here. <laughs> oh no, this rock. 
I gotta go get them somehow. Okay, wait, let me get up here. Let me get up here. Okay, come on, guys. Follow me, please. Please follow me. Maybe if I can get them to come up here. Come on. Come up here. Oh, no. They're getting them, even though I don't have half my make Ethereum. Oh, no. Come on. Follow the big cheese over to here. How many mutated Mega Ethereum does it take to beat the Alpha Mega Pithecus? Six, it seems. <laughs> you guys are useless. New trophy. Day 99. I spent most of this day doing final prep and getting any final trophies. Anymore. Okay, we got it. <laughs> day 100. Last day, and I had two bosses to fight, the Alpha Dragon and the Alpha Fenrir boss. Luckily, not at the same time. In the early morning hours of day 100, I went to the dragon's cave. Go, let's generate the portal. Where's my guy at? All right, this is what we got going on. So this is uh, this is weird, but we're gonna do it. <laughs> the Dionicus babies were up in this fight, and since I had Mega Theorem that refreshed, since they were so lazy bum babies in the last fight, I brought some along too. I wasn't sure how this fight was going to go. You have to hit the dragon hard and fast, and I wasn't entirely confident in these Dionicus. Anxiously, I waited for the dragon to land so we could unleash our attack. Try and hit us. Maybe. Maybe land. Maybe land. Ooh. All right, here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. All right, get him. Get him. Get him. Ooh. That's not good. All right, let's courage them up. It didn't take very long for most of them to start dying. Okay, okay. They're getting them. They're getting them. We're okay. Oh no! All the little babies, they're gone. Come on. Okay, this is actually going bad. <laughs> this is going bad. Oh no. Oh, I think we're gonna lose. I think we're gonna lose this one. <laughs> Oh, we got no more Dionicus, do we? No, we got a couple left. Mega Fearing was killed. Let me get in there and get some hits. Oh, are they all dead? Oh, he's taking off again. Oh, no. Oh, no. Come back, guys. Come back. Oh, they're still doing damage. They're still doing work. All right, hopefully he doesn't hit me. Don't hit me. Oh, what are you pooping for? Stop! <laughs> All right, get out of here. All right, get him from the back. Come on, come on. We got a couple guys left. Come on, I'm gonna get some hits in there too. <laughs> oh, this is so, so nerve-wracking. I don't even know where my other guys are at. Where are they at? Oh no, this went so bad. Oh, I think they're in the lava. <laughs> are you hitting them? Get them. Keep going, keep going. Get in there. Get in there. Come on, Megatherium. Come on, Megatherium. I'm overheating. Oh, no. Come on, Megatherium. Oh, those two Deinonychus are over there. <laughs> this is going so bad. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, come on. We're going to keep fighting. Oh, he's taking off again. He's still following me. Maybe I can get these other... Deinonychus. I don't know where they're at. Okay, right in the face. That's cool. Alright, keep getting there. Get in there. It's me and this Megatherium. Oh my gosh, it keeps taking off. Ooh! This other <laughs> this other Deinonychus! No! No, 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 no! Come over here! Come over here! Follow me over here. Let's go. I don't think we're gonna get this one. Oh no, these other Deinonychus here. Oh my gosh. These little boss, come on. Ooh, I got some of them. Did I get some of them? No. Come on. Come on, guys. Get out of there. Get out of there. Come on. They're not gonna get them. We can bring them over, maybe. I don't know. Yes! They're back in the game! They're back in the game! <laughs> Let's get them! Let's get them! Courage Roar! Let's go! Let's go! Come on! Oh, we almost got him! <laughs> I can't believe we did it! <laughs> oh, 
Oh my gosh, that went horrible. That went so badly, but we still... Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Oh. And somehow we did it? The Mega Theorem was the real MVP, but we couldn't really celebrate as I needed to get right into my next and final boss battle with the Alpha Fenrir. I healed up as best as I could and I headed to Blue Obelisk Terminal to teleport to the boss arena. I had a mix of Mega Theorem and Deinonychus going into this fight. Oh, and an Andrew. I didn't know what to expect as this was my first time ever fighting this Fjordor exclusive boss. Let's move over there. Or let's get everybody to follow me and maybe we'll move over here. Is he gonna. At first, he was just stuck. And then he started to whack. Yep, me. yep, 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 yep. Well, the first part of this fight, my whistles weren't working, so I had to fix that real quick. Now, once I had some working whistles, they were crushing me. There we go. Now my whistles are working. Okay, courage roar up. Let's go. Get him. Get in there, Andrew. Ooh. This thing is huge. Oh, they're all frozen. Okay, let's try and encourage them up. All right, this started off really, really bad, but I think we're okay now. I think we should be okay. We gotta watch out for that attack. Half the guys are still down there. <laughs> oh, we got this, we got this though. Okay, we're good, we're good. Oh my gosh, I think we're good. I hope nothing stupid happens. Oh my goodness, how, how, could, how could this fight be like this? And the dragon was so difficult. Oh, we didn't lose a single one. Look at the baby. Look at the baby trying to get it. Oh my gosh, useless. Useless again. And I beat it on day 100 with not very much time to spare. Upon beating the Alpha Fenrir boss, I was awarded a 225 Fenrir, which is the only way to get your own Fenrir. But you know what? Screw this Fenrir. I did all this so I could have this sick wolf head on the house. So everyone could be jealous. I do think Fenrir should be a creature you can get without fighting all the bosses and essentially beating the map because at this point, like, what's the point? I don't, I don't need it at all. Let me know your thoughts about this, and if you watched everything up until this point, comment Bumatherium down below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, and if you stuck around this long, consider subscribing. If you want more Arc Fjordor, I'll link my playlist down below. Also, you can comment below if you'd like to see other 100 Days games and videos in my style. I like helping out with games like this, so check out my social links where I have a Discord that's free to join. And thanks for watching.